Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Fowley. And welcome to Podcast 9.2. We're going to talk about heat and temperature. We're going to talk about heating curves and cooling curves. We're going to talk about melting, freezing, boiling. We're going to draw heating curves. We're going to differentiate evaporation and boiling, even more than we did today. Explain how boiling point can change. Explain how vapor pressure relates to it. Specific heat is a new word. Explain is meant by high and low specific heat. And real life examples of that stuff. So let's hop right into it. Okay. You're hot. On fire, man. Heat is total kinetic energy, meaning that mass matters. Temperature is the average kinetic energy, so mass doesn't matter. So a good comparison to this would be like a cold swimming pool. A cold pool at, let's say it's 35 degrees Fahrenheit, has more heat than a drop of boiling water. Okay, because it's got so much more heat, so it could melt more ice cubes, right? If I threw an ice cube into a swimming pool at 35 degrees, there's enough heat in that swimming pool to melt the ice cube. But one drop of boiling water can't melt a whole ice cube. Okay. Temperature is the average kinetic energy, so the mass doesn't matter. So the average particles in this drop of boiling water are going faster. And in the swimming pool, they're going slower, but there's just more of them. Temperature, you need to know this. Temperature has the units of Kelvin or degrees Celsius, and you measure it with a thermometer. Heat has the units of joules or calories, and you measure it with a, sorry about the spelling error, calorimeter. This is what a calorimeter looks like, um, and we'll get into those more next podcast. Heating curve. Uh, yeah, a graph. Slanty parts are changing temperature. This is your temperature, degrees Celsius. The flat parts are changing state, and this is going to be the time of heating. And we'll just say it's minutes. So what happens is you start off, you flatten out, you slant up, you make it longer, you go up. This right here is a solid warming. So as I add heat to a solid, it gets warmer. This is where it melts. Notice the temperature does not change when it melts. It's the same temperature the whole time. Look, it's melting. Look, it's melting. It's melted. Temperature's the same. It's melting. This is where a liquid warms up. And this is where a liquid boils. Look, it's the same temperature. It's staying the same temperature. Its temperature is not changing. Of course, my line looks a little depressed, but you get the idea. And then a gas warms. What? Gases can get hotter and colder? Yes, the temperature of the gas around me in my yard is 24 degrees, not Celsius. That would be nice. 24 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And this weekend, because we live in Chicago, it might be 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature of the air around us changes quickly. Not quickly, but it changes. Make a heating curve for a substance called Dino. So this is something we have to be able to do. Heating curves all kind of look the same, right? Um, and this is the temperature. And this says we're in degrees Celsius, so we'll do degrees Celsius. And this is the time of heating. We'll assume this one takes a long time because we'll say Dino is a slow warming substance, and we'll call it days. Well, that's a time. Why not? Okay. The melting point is 155. Well, this is where melting happens. So we'll just label this 155. And boiling is 210. Whoops. Sorry. This is where boiling happens. So it's 210. Okay. Why is boiling longer than melting? So this line should be longer. Hopefully it looks like that. And this line is shorter. I meant to make it look like that. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. Um, why is boiling longer than melting? Um, there is a bigger energy change from liquid to gas than solid to liquid. And the online thing we did today, we saw how solids are particles that are packed together and they vibrate together. And liquids just kind of roll over each other. There's not a huge difference in that. But if you compare liquids rolling over each other to gases shooting all over the place, that's a big, big energy change. 
phase changes. You'd know the names of these phase changes. You might have learned many of them in third grade, but some of them are tricky. Solid to liquid melting, check. Liquid to solid freezing, check. Liquid to gas, don't say evaporation. Boiling is when we're forcing this, so we want to have boiling. Gas to liquid is condensing. That might be something you might not have pulled off the top of your head. Um, solid to gas is sublimation. That one's new. And gas to solid is deposition. We also take sublimation, but those work. Okay? So you need to know what those things are, the names of those phase changes. Evaporation is not boiling. I got out of the pool and the water boiled off of me. Ah! It burns! It burns! No. Water evaporated off of me. Okay? I got out of the pool and water evaporated off of me. Yes. The temperature. Evaporation below the boiling point. BP is boiling point. Boiling at, not above, at the boiling point. Location. Evaporation. Surface only. Boiling. Everywhere. Okay, so you have bubbles everywhere and that happens. The other thing is evaporation is a cooling process. Evaporation equals cooling. Boiling. We saw it before equals a constant temperature. Notice how the temperature doesn't change for boiling. Boiling point and atmospheric pressure. Higher pressure means a higher temperature is needed to boil, like a pressure cooker. So if I'm trying to boil some water here, because that's all I do all day, is boil water, I have to have gas particle or liquid particles turn to a gas. Well, if I have high pressure, I have particles in here smacking that down. Get back in that water. You get back in that water. And the higher the pressure, the more particles I have, and the harder it is to have these things go from liquid to gas. Okay. A lower pressure means a lower temperature is needed to boil. So if I'm up here and I'm so if I'm way down low, like in a valley, there's a lot of air particles on top beating down on my water saying, stay there, stay there. But if I'm way up here on a mountain by a little dragon, then the height of air notices much, much lower. So there's less particles beating me back down into the liquid state. Boiling's other definition, which you just need to be able to spit out. Vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. That's what boiling is. Vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. So what is vapor pressure? So what happens is particles evaporate. This isn't boiling, but they evaporate. When they evaporate, they push back down on their liquid. Okay. So evaporation, there's the picture, or vapor pressure, that's the picture of vapor pressure. Some of the particles evaporate and the particles push back down on it. The wordy definition is the pressure of evaporated particles back on the original liquid. And if you notice, it needs a lid. Because if you don't have a lid, the particles just go wee, 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 all the way home. Specific heat. Specific heat, we abbreviate it C. I don't know why, but we do. Specific heat is the energy to change one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Huh? Okay, so this doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Cement has a low specific heat. Grass has a high specific heat. So let's pretend it's the summertime. Ah, here's the sun. And Mr. Folly, of course, lives in Indiana, so I run around barefoot. And when I run around barefoot in the summertime, um, and I'm on the cement, and it's 100 degrees outside, I burn my little tootsies. Ow, 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 it's so hot, it's so hot. So where do I run? Chun, 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 over here to the grass. Now, it's still 100 degrees over the grass, but what happens is, is the grass cannot transfer the heat as well to me, to my feet, so they burn less. Okay, So the energy it takes to change one gram, one degree Celsius, is related to how easily it changes it. Okay, So an oven and an oven rack. So if I preheat my oven to 400 degrees, what's the temperature of the air inside the oven? 400 degrees. Duh. No kidding. What's the temperature of the oven rack if it's preheated 400 degrees? Duh. It's 400 degrees. If I stick my hand in the oven, it's like, oh, it's nice and warm. But if I touch the metal rack on there, ah, it burns my hand. Why? 
because it transfers the heat better and that's a lot like what specific heat does for us. Insulators and good conductors. A low specific heat conducts heat well, usually quickly. Metals conduct heat well, glass conducts heat well, pans conduct heat well, cement conducts heat well. A high specific heat is an insulator, does not conduct heat much at all. Insulation, that's the whole idea of it. Our coat keeps us warm on the inside, keeps it cold outside. Air is a good insulator. And grass or any living things because they have water in them. It's important to know that water has a high specific heat. Lake effect. So Lake Michigan is a heat sink. Okay, that's what they call it. It has a high specific heat because it is water. Water has a high specific heat. It takes a long time to change temperature, so it is months behind because it has such a high specific heat. In July, it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit out. But the lake is three months behind, so it's 75 degrees in the lake and near it. So yay, I'm going to go swimming in the 75 degree water because it's too hot. And I'm going to pass out and die of a heat stroke. February, it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit out. But the lake is months behind, so it is 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the lake and near it. So I'm freezing cold. I'm out here barefoot because I'm from Indiana. I go near the lake and it'll be warmer. Review. Dry heating curve. Wee -ee 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 -ee. No specific heats. So what is a what has a low specific heat? Something that changes temperature quickly. And high specific heat is something that changes temperature slowly. Evaporation is not boiling. And temperature is constant when the phase changes. And that is all. Toodles.